Two terms you might hear in the same conversation are prior review and prior restraint. Let's break them down. Prior basically means before. Prior review is when a school official, like an administrator or their designee, looks at the content student journalists plan to publish before it's published. Prior restraint is when school officials restrain or stop students from publishing something, or they stop the distribution of the media after it's published and so on. It can be a form of censorship. Both are actions that are undesirable. One difference, though, is that prior review is generally not illegal, but student journalists are generally protected from prior restraint by the First Amendment, some federal court decisions, and state laws. There are some things a publication can do to give itself more protection, like declaring itself a public forum for student expression. For more on that, see our video on policy manuals. A school or district can also create policies to protect student journalists. If advisors and students can work with administrators to craft policies that explicitly forbid prior restraint, having that policy in place is a very strong protection. That might be a challenge. For more on working with administrators, see our video on building bridges. As of summer 2024, 18 states have so-called new voices laws that give student journalists control over the content they publish, generally banning prior restraint. You should know what your state's laws say about this. One note about prior review. At a glance, it might seem like prior review is always a bad thing. They only want to look at it so they can censor us. That might be true, but not necessarily. It can also be a way for school officials to add so much friction to the publishing process that students just give up. There are definitely some bad reasons for administrators to exert prior review, but there are also some reasonable reasons. I once had an administrator ask my editors to at least look over the drafts of a special edition about sexual assault and harassment a couple days before it came out. He said he just wanted to understand what was coming so he could be prepared, and he promised not to ask them to change anything. My wise editor-in-chief decided that was reasonable, and she agreed to the prior review in that situation. Legally, he probably could have demanded that prior review, but he started with a request which worked, and the relationship between the administrator and the students was stronger as a result. Just as the press can serve as a watchdog to those in power, prior review, or the possibility of it, can serve as a reminder for student journalists to keep their standards high, but an expectation of regular prior review is an undesirable dynamic. For the Scholastic Press Rights Committee, I'm Trip Robbins.